Hey, if you've been watching this channel, you already know. LibGDX is not Unity. Of course not. Unity is C-sharp and it's backed by a multi-million dollar company. So they get all the fun utilities and the benefit of a well-tested modern engine. LibGDX is largely a community-driven effort with no fancy toys. But that doesn't mean we can't adopt some of Unity's workflow. Behaviors. Behaviors. Yes, behaviors are a simple way to add scripted actions to the objects in your game. You write code for a specific type of behavior that you want to apply to your game object. For example, you may want to move your player entity with the keyboard. Apply the behavior to your game object. The real power of this model is that you can apply this behavior to any entity. This is a fantastic way to reduce excessively long and duplicated code. You can think of behaviors like an ECS or Entity Component System, but without the S. It's just a new way to approach your code. This is only one aspect of Unbox 2D, a new library from Lies. The goal of this lib is to mock Unity's behavior system, execution order, and handling of Box 2D to make it easier to access and make more sense. You can add Box 2D functionality to any entity by adding a new Box 2D behavior to the game object. Then add a fixture to it. That's it. Now let's get into how to use this lib. Follow the instructions on GitHub to add the dependencies to your project. We'll do some boilerplate code in your game class. Next, you'll have to create an instance of Unbox. You'll need to have access to this object throughout your project. Then you can create your game objects. A game object doesn't really do anything on its own. Its physics, its logic, the way it's drawn are all handled by behaviors. There are a number of built-in behaviors for Unbox 2D. We'll just add a Box 2D behavior to our game objects to create some basic bodies. This sout behavior is a good way to demonstrate how the execution order works. It adds an entry with the libgdx logger every time an event occurs for the game object. Then we'll attach a move behavior. This is actually something we need to write ourselves. Let's save that for later. We need to write our render method now. This will handle the logic and rendering for each frame of our game. Unbox has three stages that need to be called, pre-render, render, and post-render. This is the order you're supposed to do it. First, clear your screen, call the pre-render, and feed it the delta time. The nice thing is that Unbox handles all the fixed time step business for you, so you don't have to reread Gaffer's article on fix your time step for the umpteenth time. Next, set up your viewport and batch. Render Unbox and any other systems you may be using like Scene2D. Since we are using the default debug renderer that depends on shape renderer, we'll close the batch and call the box2d debug render method. Finally, we'll call the post render. The last bit of boilerplate code is to write the resize method to update our viewport. This isn't going to run yet because we have to write that move behavior class. Create a new class and call it move behavior. A behavior has several methods that need to be overridden. If you want to write all of them, make sure your class extends behavior. Otherwise, you can extend behavior adapter and only override the methods that matter to you. The goal of this behavior is to move the game object's body to the left or right. Nothing too complicated. That will be controlled by a Boolean variable. Make a constructor that initializes this value as well as passes the game object to the super constructor. Now override the fixed update method. Fixed update is reserved for anything that involves manipulating the physics of bodies. It is not tied to the frame rate and will always happen at a constant rate. That means you can define speeds without having to multiply it by delta time. This line gets the current position and this line applies an impulse in the appropriate direction. Just keep in mind that anything you put in here may be executed multiple times for every frame. Or possibly some frames get skipped depending on the speed of the target device. Don't put anything expensive like drawing to a frame buffer in here. The update method is called once for every frame. So if you had to describe something that happens over time in this method, you will need to multiply it by delta time. For now, we'll just print the current position of the game object. You can run the game now and see what it does. 
From the output, you can see that one body goes to the right and this one to the left. We can't actually see what's going on without adding some fixtures to our bodies. Returning to our game class, we can use another built-in behavior. Create box 2D circle fixture behavior. Most basic games can just use circles for collision detection. You can also use rectangles if that fits your idea of your game better. Create box 2D box fixture behavior. We should reposition our bodies so they don't spawn on top of each other. You can do that by passing in a body definition to the box 2D behavior instead of just defining a body type. If you're not familiar with box 2D, I suggest checking out some of the tutorials listed in the description. Because box 2D is pretty ubiquitous and the feature set is the same all over, any tutorials you find will be relevant. Okay, so now they knock into each other. Let's say this left object is the player and this right object is an enemy. Let's exert control over our player by using the keyboard to direct movement. Create a new behavior called keyboard behavior. In the update method, we'll do some basic keyboard polling to see if we should move up, down, left, or right. Then within the fixed update, we can apply the velocity. While I'm not entirely satisfied with the movement, this code actually lets the player move diagonally faster. Let's make a change. That's the advantage of using a behavior system instead of one big class for every entity. We just need to find the keyboard behavior and any improvements we make will be applied to anything that uses it. We'll clamp the velocity. Done. Now I'm a fickle developer. I want the right object to be the player this time. Apply the move behavior to the left game object and apply the keyboard behavior to the right game object. This way, any character in the game can be controllable by changing a single line. Let's talk about collisions. Normally, you'll handle collisions by implementing a contact listener in libgdx. This is rather clumsy and leads to having a single monolithic class responsible for handling all sorts of collisions. Unbox 2D takes the approach that Unity and many other engines do instead. Each individual behavior has its own collision-related methods, and they are called when the relevant collision event occurs. And within each method, it's no longer ambiguous as to what object is what. Behavior other will always be the behavior associated with the other object that this object collided with. In the context of this game, I want the player to disappear when they touch the enemy. So, new behavior. Player collision behavior. This time we will extend Box2D behavior adapter because this behavior will have events specific to Box2D. This includes all the regular behavior methods and methods specific to collisions. We'll specify in onCollisionEnter that will destroy the player game object. That's easy enough. Notice that destroying a body during a collision would normally be a bad thing, but our game did not crash. That's because Unbox is careful to handle those little details for us at the very end of the current frame after all the behaviors are handled. This particular code only works because we just have these two objects. It wouldn't be nice for the player to just die when they touch a wall, for example. There also may be many more kinds of enemies or players in the future. We need some way to identify what team these objects belong to. So let's make a couple more behaviors. Team enemy behavior, team player behavior. These don't actually have to do anything. We'll just apply them to the corresponding game objects. In our player collision code, we can just check if the other game object has the team enemy behavior and then destroy the player object. Speaking of walls, let's make some of those. Some liberal use of create box 2D box fixture behavior can be used here. Normally I would be reading the positions for these walls and entities from a map file instead of manually creating them. So far we've only been able to see any of these bodies because of the box 2D debug renderer. We should create a behavior that can draw our objects to the screen with some sprite representations. Download the texture files from the link in the description and add them to your assets. Then the simple sprite behavior will draw the provided image at the body position with a given offset. If there's no attached box2d behavior, 
Just set the position as 0, 0. Apply it to each kind of object. It's time for some polish. This poor game is lacking some pop. We have this ground tile we can add, and some nasty cobwebs too. That should just be another sprite behavior with some positioning. Uh oh, we can't see the player or enemy. We've neglected the render order of our game objects. So far, the game is rendering everything in the order that it was created in code. That might be okay for cheap games with little complexity, but we should use set render order on the sprite behavior to specify what is supposed to be in the background and the foreground. You can type any float in here with smaller numbers rendered in the back and larger toward the front. To keep your render orders organized and easy to modify, create some final static variables in your game class to reference throughout your code. This way you can group your backgrounds, foregrounds, and everything in between. Objects sharing the same render order will be sorted by creation order, but that usually is not a problem. There is also a set execute order if you want some behavior code to be executed in a different order. This is the order that the behaviors are executed within a single game object. Do try to avoid depending on this too much because it makes for nasty spaghetti code with hard to track down bugs. Now we have something almost reminiscent of an actual game. These behaviors are just puzzle pieces that we put together to make a final project. If you bring this to its logical conclusion, you might end up with a game like this. This game and the example code can be found in the description. Okay, you've conducted your first experiment in Unbox 2D. Let's briefly talk about the available methods and behavior and how the execution order works. This is a list of each method that you can override. Sometimes you need to set some values immediately when you add a behavior to an object. Use the method awake for that. However, you'll typically want to do things when the object is actually added to the world. That would be the start method. We've talked about fixed update and update for code that happens every physics step and frame respectively. But late update is convenient sometimes for things like cameras that have to be positioned after all the bodies are moved and interacted with. These collision methods are associated with their corresponding events in Box2D. You can always refer to the provided contact for access to the collision details. And the same Box2D rules apply, like disabling a contact is only permitted in the pre-solve method. As demonstrated in the example, render is the appropriate method to place any draw calls like you would need for a sprite or texture. You can disable game objects or their behaviors if you don't want them to execute. This is helpful with keeping your frame rate high by disabling enemies that are not in view, for example. The onDisable and onEnable methods are called when these events occur. OnDestroy is called when the object is destroyed. I usually use this as a cue to create death particle effects, increase the score, or any other related task. This diagram shows the execution order of all these methods and how they flow together. That might be important to review if your physics simulation isn't syncing up with your drawing, for example. Unbox2D addresses several shortcomings in coding with plain libgdx. I hope this video has shown you how it can help organize your code and reduce some bloat. We only went over the basic functionality with Box2D, but you can implement your own kinds of worlds if you use a different physics engine. Yes, there's more to learn about this lib, but if you're unsure of what something does, just check the Java docs. It's documented rather well. Anyway, thanks to Lies for making yet another excellent lib, and thank you for watching. I'm gonna open it. I saw you with the box. What was in the box? What's in the box? No! Just throw it all away, you know. No! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh!